Hello students. Now in this video, we will discuss uh, one aspect of leaf that is venation. Venation. And you, you can see in the lamina of the leaf, in the lamina of the leaf, you will see some lines, right? These are called veins and these veins are actually composed of vascular tissues, xylem and phloem. Okay, I hope you know that xylem is dead conducting tissue and is a water conducting tissue, whereas phloem is a living tissue and is a food conducting tissue. So that's why these veins are actually not only help in conduction, but also help in the, okay, giving strength to the lamina. And because of the presence of these veins and veinlets, okay, the lamina okay, spread out or it expands like that. Okay, and then uh, you can see that uh, this arrangement is not same in all. That's why we call this uh, uh, mode of arrangement of veins and veinlets in the lamina as what venation. So what is venation? The mode of arrangement of veins and veinlets in the lamina is called venation. And this venation is basically of two types. One is uh, reticulate venation and the other one is parallel venation. And also you see here, there is uh, one uh, thick vein is here and this is called midrib or costa. Midrib or costa. And uh, it will produce what? Branches and the branches are called uh, lateral veins. And lateral veins will produce sublateral veins. And sublateral veins will produce veinlets. And if these veinlets are fused, they will uh, make one network. And this network is called what? Reticulum. That's why. The venation is called reticulate venation. When uh, these veins and veinlets will form a net like structure or net like appearance, the venation is called reticulate venation. And this is uh, the characteristic venation among dicords or dicord ledinous plants. Okay, so that's why here I am writing. Uh, uh, dicorns, characteristic of dicorns. And when we come to parallel variation, this parallel variation uh, here also you will find uh, the midrib, lateral veins, sublateral veins, and veinlets, but all of them will run parallelly. They do not uh, make a net like arrangement. That's why this variation is called parallel variation and this is uh, the characteristic among the leaves of monocords. monocords. But in both the cases uh, we come across with some exceptions. There are some monocards that exhibit reticulate variation. In the similar way, there are some dicots that exhibit parallel variation. So just remember these uh, uh, exceptions. Okay, smilax.
कि अलोकेशिया एंड दिस डायस्कोरिया these are monocots with reticulate variation like that uh, there are uh, some dicots exhibiting uh, parallel variation uh, okay the examples are eryngium and calophyllum eryngium and calophyllum or dicots with parallel variation <coughs> okay and now uh, uh, you can see that this reticulate variation based on the number of metrics Okay, it is of uh, two types: unicostate reticulate variation or pinnately reticulate variation. Pinnately reticulate variation or unicostate reticulate variation. Uni means one, costa means midrib. Okay, when uh, you find uh, a single midrib. Okay, it is called unicostate reticulate venation. You can see here there is one midrib and producing lateral veins and uh, sublateral and veinlets, and all of them are fusing and forming what a net-like uh, arrangement. And the examples I wrote here, unicostate reticulate venation examples are mango plant, guava plant, jackfruit. Okay, and now uh, let us come to uh, the other one, multi-costate reticulate variation or uh, palmately reticulate variation. Multi-costate reticulate variation or palmately reticulate variation. So here, uh, multi means what? Uh, more than one midribs will be there. Okay, and you can see here in this uh, diagram you can see three metrics, and in this diagram you can see one, two, three, four, five, five metrics. But of course, uh, here uh, you can see that these uh, three metrics, which are born at the base of uh, the lamina, are uh, spreading into the lamina, and then they are coming to the apex and where they are. Merging or fusing or converging. That's why this is called convergent uh, reticulate variation. Means what uh, you can call it is what multi-costate convergent reticulate variation. That's why I wrote here multi-costate convergent reticulate variation. And the example is what Zizifus, that is uh, Indian plum, and Cinnamomum. Okay. Uh, that is uh, uh, I hope you know that is called. Uh, Dalchini. Okay, and uh, multi-costate divergent. You can see here. Okay, there are uh, five uh, midribs or five costa, but uh, they are entering into lobes of the lamina. That's why there is no question of uh, a fusion of these uh, uh, midribs at the apex. That's why they are diverged. That's why it is called divergent uh, venation. Okay, and the example for this uh, multi-costate divergent reticulate venation, I wrote here multi-costate divergent reticulate venation, pumpkin, cucumber, and other gods. Okay, you know bitter god, uh, okay, snake god, bottle god. Uh, all these uh, uh, plants will have uh, the leaves with uh, what venation? Multi-costate divergent reticulate venation. Okay, now uh, let us come to this parallel venation. And in the parallel venation, uh, uh, also you will find uh, these two types. That is what uh, unicostate parallel or pinnately parallel. 
like that the multi constant parallel or parametric parallel okay unique constant parallel already i told you the, you will find one mid rib here and uh, from one mid rib many lateral veins are coming and uh, uh, veinlets but they are all arranged uh, how parallelly so uh, that's why this is called unicostal parallel and the best example i hope uh, you can identify this uh, leaf it is nothing but what banana leaf okay and when we come to multicostal uh, parallel variation so here also you will find more than uh, two oh, sorry more than one mid rib so here uh, you can see three mid ribs but uh, they are all uh, spreading into the lamina and once they come to the apex they fused okay diffused here so that's why it is called convergent and the example for this convergent multi costed convergent parallel venation grasses okay and uh, uh, like that uh, here you can see i have used uh, uh, green colored lines here the green colored lines uh, represent uh, uh, these mid ribs and you can see that uh, there are so many mid ribs but they have entered into the lobes of uh, uh, the lamina that's why this is called divergent type of uh, uh, venation so multi costed divergent parallel venation that is what uh, the example is toddy palm so this is uh, the venation uh, different types of uh, venation and uh, uh, okay we will uh, discuss uh, now about the types of uh, leaves so now uh, let us discuss about the different types of leaves and uh, the leaves we come across with different uh, shapes okay and uh, uh, some of the diagrams i drew on the board and you can look at uh, these different types of leaves and uh, actually these leaves are classified based on whether uh, the lamina that is the upper expanded portion is dissected or not and this dissection can also be called about incision if uh, uh, the leaf is not incised at all and uh, if it is dissected but uh, the dissection is not reaching the midrib then uh, such leaves are called uh, simple leaves and if uh, the lamina is dissected and uh, into fragments and each fragment resembles a leaf and these leaves are called uh, uh, the fragments are called what not leaves actually they are the leaflets such leaves with leaflets are called compound leaves so the leaf without leaflets is simple leaf and the leaf with leaflets is called compound leaves or the leaf uh, which is uh, not at all dissected or uh, uh, dissected but uh, the incision is not reaching the midrib is called what simple leaf so here also we are finding uh, two uh, categories so uh, if it is not at all uh, dissected the leaf is called what entire leaf and such entire leaves you will find in the mango tree chain rose jackfruit tree banyan tree people tree like that you can uh, quote many examples uh, for uh, the entire leaves and now uh, when it is dissected but uh, the dissection is not reaching the midrib then uh, such leaves are called what simple lobed leaves simple lobed leaves and the simple lobed leaves based on the arrangement of the lobes if uh, uh, the lobes are arranged on either side of uh, uh, the midrib like uh, the pinna or the feather means what feather like arrangement then uh, it is called pinnately lobed leaf and the example is what mustard and uh, suppose if uh, the lobes are arranged uh, like the palm okay you can see that uh, they are arranged like the palm and it is called what palmately lobed leaf and the examples are cotton and different gourds and uh, passiflora that is passion flower plant these are examples for what palmately lobed so these uh, two are the variations in uh, the simple leaves 
okay and uh, you had to remember that uh, the simple leaves uh, doesn't have what uh, uh, these leaflets but they may have uh, lobes okay and uh, now let us come to the compound leaves these compound leaves are of uh, uh, two types based on uh, the arrangement of the leaflets and suppose if uh, uh, there is uh, one ratchet there is one axis and uh, over the axis if you uh, find the leaflets then uh, uh, it gives us uh, an appearance like what a pinna or feather then it is called pinnately compound leaf so you remember one thing that here uh, you will find what an axis bearing leaflets is called what ratchet and over the ratchet you will find uh, the leaflets and many people uh, they mistake uh, the leaflets as what leaves then how to identify whether it is leaf or leaflet very simple every leaf will have an axil and in the axil you will find what axillary bud but uh, the leaflets uh, do not have axillary buds and you will find the axillary bud here at the base of uh, the entire thing okay in that way we can uh, identify whether it is a leaf or leaflet okay and uh, uh, these ratches is a singular form and sometimes what will happen uh, uh, it may have uh, some more branches that's why based on the number of ratchai okay it is further uh, classified into four types unipinnately when there is one uh, ratches bipinnately when there are two ratchai tripinnately when there are three ratchai and uh, decompound when there are more than uh, three ratchai okay and uh, remember here unipinnately compound one ratchis and uh, uh, over that uh, ratchis you will find the leaflets but i drew two diagrams here one is uh, tamarind and the other one is what neem and rose and uh, i hope uh, uh, you are able to differentiate these two so here uh, you will find what even number of leaflets whereas here there is odd number okay so this is called uh, paripinnate leaf and this is called imparipinnate leaf okay and uh, when we come to bipinnate compound acacia that is gum tree is the example for that and uh, you will find what uh, the ratchis which is called primary ratchis and it has produced the branches called uh, secondary ratchai and the leaflets are present on on the secondary ratchai so when leaflets are present on secondary ratchai that leaf can be identified as bipinnately compound leaf and here you can see that uh, uh, the main ratchis that is primary ratchis and produce the branches called secondary ratchai and the secondary ratchai in turn produced the branches and we call them as what secondary secondary ratchai and the leaflets are present on uh, these secondary ratchai so i didn't complete the diagram because uh, it takes time so you just you can see many uh, okay secondary and tertiary ratchai and uh, over the tertiary ratchai you will find the leaflets that's why it is called what tripinnately compound leaf okay and the example is uh, i hope you know drumstick plant okay and uh, uh, when we come to the coriander leaves so the coriander leaves will uh, you can it is not possible for us to count the number of uh, ratchai there so uh, it is uh, uh, okay unevenly uh, okay produces uh, these uh, uh, ratchai with uh, uh, leaflets that's why coriander is an example for what decompound leaves now uh, uh, let us uh, see this uh, one the next one palmately compound leaf and in palmately compound leaf there is no ratchis and uh, you will find what uh, the leaflets are there and the leaflets are arranged above this uh, petiole okay above the petiole you will find the leaflets and uh, uh, as they are arranged over the petiole 
so it looks like a palm and that's why the leaves are called what palmately compound and it is further uh, uh, classified into six types based on the number of leaflets okay and if there is single leaflet then it is called a uniforiate compound leaf okay and uh, um, if there are two leaflets bifoliate compound leaf if there are uh, three leaflets trifoliate compound leaf and if there are four leaflets at the apex of the petiole tetrafoliate compound leaf or quadrifoliate compound leaf and if there are uh, uh, five leaflets then it is called pentafoliate and if there are more than five it is called multifoliate or plurifoliate compound leaves okay and uh, you can see here the uh, uh, the examples i wrote here this is unifoliate compound leaf example is citrus and actually speaking, uh, uh, this is a trifoliate compound leaf, but uh, two leaflets uh, are not developed and because of which uh, it bears one leaflet. Because you remember that uh, uh, actually speaking, unifoliate uh, leaf is not at all possible. Because uh, uh, we are, what we are saying, uh, these compound leaves are formed due to dissection. Even if you cut one lamina, cut you will get how many leaflets two leaflets so that's why remember that this is uh, a uh, it is uh, a, a kind of uh, okay uh, thing that happened means what uh, during course of evolution two leaflets are uh, suppressed the growth of two leaflets are suppressed and only the middle leaflet uh, uh, has grown into the leaflet okay so that's why it is uh, unifoliate citrus is the best example for that and uh, uh, here you can see that this is the petiole and uh, at the tip uh, there are two leaflets and the example is hardwickia so bifoliate and here there are uh, this is petiole and at the tip of which you will find uh, three leaflets and uh, uh, the country bean that is dolichus lab lab is the example for uh, trifoliate compound leaf and uh, here uh, uh, this is petiole and at the tip of uh, the petiole there are uh, five leaflets so the example is paris quadrifolia uh, that belongs to liliaceae family okay and uh, here uh, this is the petiole and at the tip of uh, the petiole there are five leaflets and uh, that's why this is called pentafoliate compound leaf and the example is gynandropsis Gynotropsis pentaphylla and uh, here you can see this is the petiole and at the tip of the petiole you will find what uh, many leaflets are more than five and that's why it is called multifoliate compound leaf or plurifoliate compound leaf and the example is silk cotton you know like that uh, uh, these are uh, the different uh, types of uh, uh, leaves which we encounter among uh, the plants.